residents of Alameda County, uh, Contra Costa County, San Francisco. Is that it? That might be it. Thank you, Ron. Um, made a choice to join the BART system. At the time they joined the BART system, when you look at the system map, there was a dot, 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 dot out to Livermore. It was a future extension planned somewhere in the way future. So, people have come to me tonight, and people come to me all the time, and they say, what happened to all the money we've been paying into BART all these years? And I can appreciate that. Because I've been paying it too. Now, how many of you ride BART right now? How many of you from Livermore? Okay. As you can see, Livermore has been benefiting from BART to some extent because people have been riding. And that would be the argument. The BART board, by the way, the elected, I, I want to be really clear. I'm not a BART board director, I'm a county supervisor, and we deal largely with the jails foster care, homelessness, um, social services, health care for the indigent. Um, those are the kind of the fun things we deal with. So when you ask where the money would come from, the BART board director, if he was here, which is elected by you all, John McCarley, would tell you that that money was invested into the core system, which is up and operating now. Um, it is. Uh, it has paid for an extension that got far down to Dublin, Dublin Pleasanton. So they would tell you that you've gotten your money's worth. Okay, I'm not saying I necessarily agree with that. Um, and I'm not really here to even talk about that tonight because I'm a BART board, wait, I am, a, <laughs> wow. I am an Alameda, that, somebody's listening. Uh, I am an Alameda County Supervisor, I'm not a BART board director, not question. If you want an accounting on where all of Livermore's money has gone to over the past 50 years, that person could better answer that question. What I know is, in this valley, we have a transportation crisis. And I'm trying to fix it. I'm not waiting for the BART board director who, uh, or for the BART board directors to do it, because quite frankly, they don't want to do it. They said in, I believe, May or April of last year, they were not going to build this project. They were not going to build BART for Livermore. They didn't say they were going to give your taxes back. Mayor Marchand was there, I was there. We were all there pitching for it. There was a very close vote, and one of the votes, we thought we had it at one time. We thought it was pretty close. One of the directors changed at the last minute, and the, bar, the board went sideways on us. So what we have right now is we have the uh, truck traffic going to triple by 2030 over the Altamont. Um, you have right now 82,000 daily commuters through the Altamont. Uh, you have a situation where up against our county line, now keep in mind in Alameda County, we have been very focused on city center growth, meaning we want the cities to grow, we don't want the county to grow. So there's an ordinance that does not allow us to grow. So as you get closer to the county line, you can only build one unit for 320 acres. That's how we feel about it. But when you get right on the other side of that county line, you have thousands of houses being built by Tracy. So what is happening? Those people are not getting on the freeway. They are commuting through our rural roads. They're on Patterson Pass. They're, they're on Altamont. Um, they're, they're on any road you can find out there, they're commuting on it. And quite frankly, they're not very nice commuters, to be really clear. Um, I was making a left-hand turn once on Tesla, and as I was starting to turn, I just happened to look at my mirror, had my signal on, doing everything I was supposed to do, turning it into a driveway, and somebody was passing me on the left-hand side. This situation is not going to get better unless somebody stands up and says, we got to do something. I want to thank Bob Warner, he and your councilman uh, from Livermore. He is on the Valley League board also. We're trying to find a solution because BAR is not going to build it. We think we have a solution in Valley League. For $1.8 billion, you can build BAR at Isabel into the Dublin Pleasanton Station, about five miles. This project here, because of the technology, 
and the fact that it's not a special rail guide, and the fact that we're not going to have double tracks all the way through, we can build this same project, $1.8 billion, from Dublin, Pleasanton, Barton, through the Altamont, to, Rip to Riverbank, California. Does anybody know where Riverbank is? Okay, some of you. It's beyond Tracy. 42 miles for the same price. I'm going to be really clear. It was mentioned earlier that I'm the chair of FTC. When I wasn't the chair, and when this project was moving through, it became very obvious to me that the region was not going to spend $1.8 billion to build anything five miles. They weren't going to do it. They might build a bridge, but they'll come up way short with 1.8. So where we're at tonight, if you want to know where the money is you've been paying for the last 50 years, call John McFarland. Uh, but he's going to tell you it went into the core system. And he's going to tell you it continues to go in the core system. Right now, they're building 400 new art trains. I think some of you have probably seen them. Bob, do you know how much this costs up here? About four and a half million. Four and a half million per, per car. Per car. It's, it's a couple billion dollars for the region to, to it's, it's, well, it's way more than that, but it's an astronomical number. But quite frankly, I'm going to be really honest with you people. And I'm being really serious with you, and I'm being really honest with you tonight. Valley Link can be run by anybody we want. It can be ran by Lavda, which Michael Tree is the executive director here. He's also the executive director of the Valley Link. <laughs> Live no joke, this man sleeps in his office because he's working so hard on this project. No joke. It's honest God truth. I said, Michael, I live on the other side of 580. You want to come over? Use a room? I got one. <laughs> Closer. But I want to tell you, this train here could be ran by Ace, could be ran by Lavda, it could be ran by a new board. I'm not really excited about starting a new transportation agency within uh, the Bay Region because we already have, I think, 27. We don't need another transit agency. But I do know one thing. I don't want Valley Link ran by Bart. Because I don't like Bart's service, I don't like their cleanliness, and I think we in the Valley expect a lot more. So, for those of you who are sad we're not Bart, I'm not. Just going to be very clear with you. Straight talk. So, on the other side of it, I'm extremely pleased you're all here because you're interested at some level. I hope that you're interested in solving the transportation crisis that we have out on 580. The more we can get 580 moving, the less commuters on there, the better off we all will be. Because, quite frankly, I'm going to be really clear with you, this isn't just a congestion issue. It's a public health issue, too. There's a bunch of CO2 that comes over from the 880 corridor and rests on the 580 corridor, not to mention what is already being attributed through that corridor by the people that are commuting through there. I'm excited that we have Tracy. Uh, Veronica Vargas is my vice chair. Uh, I'm excited that they're pushing, they're pulling really hard to get the project going. I was in Washington, D.C. two weeks ago, and they were there, too. I seem to be following them through all the... Uh, all the uh, departments within the uh, uh, DC, FTA, FHWA, and all those, Federal Transit Authority, uh, Federal uh, Highway Authority. And I can tell you that they were all very excited. They are excited about this project because it really is a mega regional project and it's not just a five mile project. So at this point, I will let Dr. Daniel Isofano take it back, unless there's any questions, be real quick. Yes, sir. Who's responsible for all these, uh, within the last couple of years, changes in 580 with all these little short 60 cents here, 20 cents there, and change the lane? The express lane? Yeah. Well, uh, I guess I'd have to tell you I voted for that. Uh, I can't, I can't, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I can tell you that um, the way I view those lanes is, first of all, it has made the speed on the general purpose lanes faster and it has made the speed in the, in the uh, express lane faster too. You don't have to use the express lane, and you don't have to pay, because you can get a buddy with you, and they can ride with you, and then you get to ride for free. So you can either pay to drive it, or you can uh, go ahead and get a friend. But I will tell you this, it eased congestion, which is what I'm trying to do, because every time we ease congestion on, on 580, it eases the cut through traffic through the rural roads. That's the first thing. Um, the second thing is, 
There was a lot of people commuting from San Joaquin and Stanislaus through this community, and they weren't paying taxes for the road. Let me be really clear with you. I don't mind charging them if they want to run through the express lane so we can continue to do projects within Alameda County. I want to be really clear with you. The money generated in that corridor, it is stated by law that it has to go into transit in that corridor. For example, it could pay the operating costs for this train. So, guilty, but I see a lot of good reasons why we should have done it. Yes, ma'am. And I don't want to dominate tonight because I'm not the main event. Um, Valley Link and Daniel's the main event, but I'll go ahead and thank you. Well, I just wanted to ask the, the fact that the, the meeting strip is no longer there has accelerated for uh, the cost of Valley Link. Isn't that correct? Because now the freeway has to be. No, it's not, it's not correct. Um, and the reason it's not correct, and, and I see how that makes some sense. Um, what happened was, is the width of the median was not wide enough to handle rail in that corridor. Now I'm going to say this, it probably wasn't wide enough to handle, or it was not wide enough to handle BART. It might have been wide enough to do Valley Lake because we're gonna single track. Now whether or not when we come into that and come into the station, we'll probably be double track, I'm assuming, but for the most part of the 580 corridor, it wasn't wide enough to handle BART and some of these decisions were made long ago. So, I hope that helps. Did it help? No. It doesn't, do you want me to explain it again? But no. It wasn't wide enough to, 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 to handle the park. The park. But it may have been handled uh, valid. So how is the freeway actually going to be expanded to accommodate that? Daniel, you're gonna, he's gonna go into all that. All right. I'm not, I'm not protective of that. Okay. All right, sir. So you said that money could, you, that was the, the word you used, could go to operating gates. How do we keep that money from going to BART, and then they won't go to BART. I, well, here's 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 the scoop. I sit on. In fact, I was the chairman for a couple of years for the 580 and the 680 express lanes. Those are ran by Alameda County. Okay, Alameda County Transportation uh, Commission runs those lanes. We control that money. Okay, our first responsibility to those lanes is operating and maintenance. We have to keep those lanes potable free. We have to keep them in so they're good, free-flowing, fast-moving lanes. That's the first thing. Then we have to get a reserve going, which is what we're working on right now. Once we achieve the reserve, and I've also talked to Art and I've talked to Michael Tree. I've told them I don't think they should wait till all the reserves get in because they want $20 million in reserves. Um, but I said they should start releasing money to LAPDA now. Um, for that express corridor and Michael will be talking to them at some point and we'll start probably releasing maybe like a few hundred thousand dollars a year or something like that right now. It will not. It is in state legislation that money has to be spent in the corridor. When I said could, it can go to the bus agency, it can go to the train, it can't go to Uber, it can't go to Lyft, it has to go to a public transit or public transit agency. Oh, good. I answered all the questions. All right. Well, listen, like, have a great night. I hope when everybody leaves, they feel positive about what this is, because this is really good for the Tri-Valley. If, if we all could work real hard, and I can tell you our board is working extremely hard, um, we can have this train up and running by 2024. That's a few years faster than Mark said they could have done it even when they started a while back. So I feel really good about where we're at, and you have some really good, hardworking people. If you have any problems, give me a call. Thanks. All right.